Hello, I'm Uta Müller from Uta's Media Talk at the Frankfurt Book Fair 2017. And I'm here uh, with Mr. James Lorimer and uh, holding in my hands the Maple Surrey book. Um, yes, tell me about something and introduce yourself, please. So I'm the publisher of Formac Publishing in Halifax. It's a company that publishes 15 books a year. We've been in business since 1980. So, and we publish books primarily for readers in Nova Scotia, but we also publish children's books that we sell across Canada and in the States. And what is special um, in Nova Scotia? Well, people in Nova Scotia are much more interested in local and regional history than in some other parts of Canada. So we do lots of books that pick up on, on the history of the province. Um, like, for example, this year we're doing uh, a book about that, that's a day-by-day -day, calendar of, of Nova Scotia with you know, so historical events that happened on each day of the year and other, we, we've done books about the Acadians and about the experience of the Acadians in Nova Scotia and lots of other, lots of other historical subjects. We also, as you pointed out, do cookbooks. There's lots of interest in, in books like, yes, like yeah. out, of, out of new Nova Scotia kitchens. So we've published books by chefs that are based in Nova Scotia and we publish books of recipes based on the kinds of cooking that's done in Nova Scotia restaurants and hotels. Um, what is the reason that Nova Scotia is perhaps a little bit closed because it is an island? No, I think it's because the, the unlike let's say Western Canada, you know, p lots of people in Nova Scotia trace their roots back to the 1750s, to the 1780s, to the early 1800s. You know, black Nova Scotians, you know, who came to, to Nova Scotia just after the American Revolution or after the War of 1812. You know, Aboriginal Nova Scotians who, of course, trace their history back thousands of years. So there, there are many, many of the people in Nova Scotia have a very strong sense of the fact that they've been in Nova Scotia for a long time. In the rest of Canada, there are, there are parts of Canada, like Quebec, for example, where people have similar roots that go back you know, hundreds of years. But in Nova Scotia, uh, in particular, there's a strong sense of, you know, sort of having, you know, having been there and being interested in the history of the province and the history of your own family, the history of the community that you live in, much more so. I publish in Toronto as well. And in Toronto, to get people to, to be interested in the history of Toronto is a much different, much more difficult struggle. Um, 20 years ago I visited West Canada, uh, British Columbia and Alberta and I think it was totally different from Nova Scotia. Well, there are a lot of Maritimers that have moved to, you know, the rest of Canada. So, so if I were in Alberta, you know, uh, I, I would quickly be able to find lots of people whose roots go back to Nova Scotia. The same is true in BC. But yeah, there, there are different kinds of societies, much more based on the sort of the exploitation of the resources that's been happening since, say, 1900, even later. Yeah, whereas Nova Scotia, even though it is a resource economy, it's a more more complex, more rooted kind of place with a, and, and actually more of an intellectual tradition too, surprisingly. You know, early universities, early schools and early universities in Canada, you know, go, the, the, there were a lot of institutions of that kind and a lot of university graduates in Nova Scotia than, say, in the West. And you are based in Toronto too, and what kind of books do you publish in Toronto? Well, in Toronto, my company, Lorimer, does two kinds of books. We do lots of books for kids. Our orientation is to publish books that will appeal to kids who don't normally read books, so-called reluctant readers. And so we try to, for example, we publish a lot of sports fiction, lots of books about hockey, lots of books about soccer, you know, books about, about other kinds of sports that kids are interested in. And for teenagers, we publish novels that are 
you know, about the world that real teenagers in Canada live in as opposed to the fictional world that you find in American young adult you know it's all all the, all the kids have doctors and lawyers as parents and have lots of cars and lots of money and stuff our books are more realistic but yeah my Toronto company's kids books are for the reluctant reading thing our adult books are books about Canadian public affairs politics and economics and what do you think is a big difference to the United States or the publishing in United in the United States Well, Canadian publishing, independent companies like ours, um, the business is not an economic business. You can't stay in business as an independent publisher in Canada because of the huge competition that there is from books that are flooding into Canada from the U.S. So if, Canadian, if no Canadian books were being published in, in Canada, nobody in Canada would notice because there's so many books that are coming in all the time from the States. And American publishers treat Canada as a spillover market, so it's just an extra, it's like a bonus. So the, they can spend a lot of money marketing their books and they make big margins when they do sell books. So independent Canadian publishing really would be, is a kind of business that wouldn't exist except for the fact that there's a strong public interest in having Canadian books. And so that's led to government support for Canadian publishers. So all Canadian independent publishers get supported by provincial and federal governments. So the combination of being able to sell your books to the, in the market, plus the support that you get from, from the government is what makes it possible to, to publish the number of books that are being published in Canada. Because there's, you know, Canadian publishing, independent Canadian publishing is very strong and very flourishing, but it only is that way because of this combination of being able to sell your books in the market, but also getting support from government sources. And do you sell international licenses? Well, we're, we, we actually, yes, the answer is yes, our books and all Canadian publishers, that's why we're here in Frankfurt, the all Canadian publishers are very oriented to the international market. So in our particular cases, our companies, the books, the children's books that we publish, we distribute the actual, through a U.S. company, we distribute our books in the U.S. to U.S. buyers, and then we sell rights to, like, for example, we have a series of books that are about bullying and conflict conflict and, you know, and, yeah, conflict for young people. Well, those books we've sold to all kinds of different, from Croatia to Japan to South Africa to whatever, and, and that's common. You know, Canadian publishers are very or internationally oriented because the market is small, because you put together, you know, the market that you have, the home market that you have with international markets, you know. And what is your goal for the future? Do you have a vision? Well, my personal vision is that um, Canadian Canadian writing, Canadian books have been have been quite important for Canadian readers. But that was true in the 1980s. That was true in the 1970s. And since that time, slowly but surely, the presence of Canadian books in Canada has been diminishing because, I would say, of this constant pressure of English language books coming into the market and being very effectively marketed to Canadians who are very much audiences of U.S. media too. It's, you know, independent, the, the, the amount of, of foreign media that Canadians consume is extraordinary. And so the effect is that Canadian books are less and less read by Canadians. My vision for the future is that we actually reverse that, that we deal with these, the, and it was the same in the 1960s, we all got started publishing because there were, all there were in Canada were foreign books. And so we wanted to make space for Canadian work and we were successful, but over time the success has diminished. And my personal vision is that we figure out what the causes are of this diminution and we get public, because there's lots of public support for Canadian culture, but it doesn't translate into the actions of the kinds of organizations like bookstores and public libraries and school libraries and other kinds of book reviewing periodicals that we, tra that we 
transform things so that Canadian work has a more prominent place in Canadian life. Because otherwise we're an occupied country. You know, otherwise we're in a situation where Canada exists on the ground, but in people's minds, all I know about is American politics and American sports and American ideas, and that's not healthy for any country. But what can you do to increase your figures and as sales and... Oh, we've, um, well, well, we've got lots of ideas about what you can do. The f most important thing that you can do is you can say, just a second, you know, all books are not the same. The, 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 you know, you can look, if you go on Amazon, you know, just if you're interested in any subject, the w Second World War, for example, if you read English and you say to Amazon, I'm interested... I'm interested in books about the Second World War. Up come hundreds of books about the Second World War. Well, 95 or 97 or 98 percent of them will be American books if you're in the U.S. If you're in Canada, 97 or 98 percent of the books will be American books. And so what you can do is you can see what's going on behind the scenes in all these channels of how people learn about books and how people find books and how people buy books and say all books are not the same. If you're, if you're, in, if you're in America, American books are relevant to you. British books aren't that relevant. Well, but if you're in Canada, Canadian books are more relevant. If you want to read about the Second World War, you want to read about what Canadians did in the Second World War. You don't want to read about what Well, I'm not saying you shouldn't, or I'm not saying you wouldn't, but it's more relevant to read about, first of all, about what Canadians were doing in the Second World War than what the Americans were doing. But right now, the infrastructure behind the book-selling business doesn't, and the library business, and it goes on and on, doesn't work that way. So we're fixing it. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, Uta Müller, Frankfurt Book Fair, Uta's Media Talk.